This is Franziska Brücker. She is one of the young German talents doing research at the interface between artificial intelligence and neuroscience. Her workplace, the Max Planck Institute for Biological Cybernetics in Tübingen, in Germany. I study the role that feedback plays in learning. We often learn something new, a new skill, for example, or new knowledge. We do this with the help of two forms of learning, practicing ourselves and by getting feedback on our progress. Both shape how and what we learn. But when do we need feedback? And how does our brain deal with new information if we don't receive proper feedback? Different people need different feedback. Children, for example, first need to be taught what the correct words for everyday objects are before they can automatically categorize them like adults do. But adults differ in their field of expertise too. The experiences we make influence how our brain processes new information. Some adults might find it much easier and others much harder to do exactly the same task, simply because of previous experiences. Franziska Brücker wants to understand under which conditions independent learning works and under which conditions learning goals can only be achieved with feedback. To find out, she conducted several experiments online in which subjects could participate using their internet browser. In one behavior experiment, we show different objects and subjects have to learn how to assign them to different groups. Sometimes we give subjects feedback and sometimes we don't. My results from this experiment suggest that independent learning without feedback works well if someone already has a good idea of how to categorize incoming stimulus patterns based on previous experience. Otherwise, feedback is needed. Feedback can take many forms. We often think of it as right or wrong, but feedback can also be much more subtle or complex. How feedback helps learning depends on its clarity, but clarity depends on how feedback is perceived and processed. This varies from person to person. Unfortunately, we don't yet understand how these different degrees of feedback influence general learning mechanisms. So there's still a lot to be done before we can apply findings from basic research to everyday life. At present, many families and young people are involved in homeschooling. Students have to work much more independently because the teacher is no longer in the immediate vicinity. To develop tools that could improve remote teaching, scientists first need to better understand when explicit feedback is needed for learning itself, but also for the motivation to learn. I hope that highly simplified experiments in the lab can help to break down these complex learning contexts so that we can simulate them using methods from artificial intelligence. Because if we have algorithms that mimic human learning, we can use them to deduce how we can facilitate learning. For example, under the constraints of homeschooling. Franziska Brücker mentions three factors that are particularly important for her subject's learning. The first important factor is the difficulty of the task I'm supposed to learn. The second is my previous experience. And the third, the speed with which I can learn. Franziska Brücker hopes that her work can improve learning methods and help develop applications for everyday learning problems in the future.